Hello, my name is Joey Hadley with Hadley and Speakaboo Boxing. I have been training fighters for over 50 years, and today I would like to pass down some wisdom to you about boxing that I learned personally from Customato during the time that he was my trainer as a professional boxer when I lived with him in Catskill, New York. Let's get started. I saw Elvis Presley in Kid Galahad when I was 13 years old. I was a major, major Elvis fan. So after I saw that movie, I came home and told my dad, who had boxed when he was in the Army, that I wanted to be a boxer. So he became my first coach, and he started taking me to the gym to work out. And I can remember him telling me that when he boxed, he did not have a very good right hand. It wasn't very powerful. He didn't understand it at the time. Uh, and then several years later, he started going to the YMCA, and I can remember going with him as a little kid and seeing him just over and over in front of that heavy bag, throwing it right hand. I didn't really understand it at the time, but after I told him that I wanted to be a boxer, he told me that uh, he had learned how to throw a right hand uh, over time, practicing down at the YMCA, and that he did not have a very good right hand during his short career, but that I was going to have a great right hand. And we worked on it hour after hour after hour, and it paid off, and the right hand turned out to be the best punch in my arsenal. Uh, the first time I met Customato was in 1971, when I was on the United States boxing team, and we fought the Canadians for the North American title. Uh, this was my first international match, and I was really nervous. Um, I went out the first round right after the bell rang and didn't get my hands up properly and a Canadian guy threw a left hook and knocked me down immediately. Uh, I got back up and fought and knocked him down in the first round, knocked him down in the second round, knocked him down in the third round and I won a unanimous decision. After the fight, uh, Customato, uh, who was a friend of the USA's uh, team boxing coach, came up to me and introduced himself and asked me had I thought about turning professional. And I told him that I had, that I had had some people come to me and ask me if I wanted them to be my man their manager, uh, but I just wasn't interested at the time. And he gave me his uh, telephone number and said, if you decide that you want to fight pro, I would like to be your manager. So uh, I was excited about that. My dad was a big Floyd Patterson fan. So I knew who Floyd was and had heard my dad mention Customato. Well, this was in 1971. Uh, go up to 1973, I'm out in Las Vegas uh, fighting in the Nationals. And uh, I think it was the quarter, quarter round bout, I believe. I fought the Navy champion. And uh, he knocked me down in the first round. And I got up and knocked him down. He knocked me down in the second round. I knocked him down in the second round. And I knocked him down twice in the third round, and I won a unanimous decision. Well, after that fight was over, I was uh, taking the gloves off and everything, and somebody tapped me on the shoulder, and I turned around, and it was Cuss. And he had uh, ridden a train all the way to Las Vegas to watch the Nationals. Uh, and again, he said that if I ever decided to turn professional, that he would like to manage me. Uh, that it really impressed him. He had seen me twice get knocked down and get up and fight back and win the fight. So uh, uh, if this is 73. At the beginning of 74, I decided that I was going to turn professional and uh, that I wanted Cuss to be my manager. I had had several other people over the years, uh, guys from Texas, Florida, Georgia, 
had approached me about uh, them being my managers, but nothing uh, really interested me about them. I just couldn't get Cuss out of my mind, and I felt like that he was the right one that I should go with. So I called him on the phone and uh, told him that I wanted to turn pro and I wanted him to be my trainer and uh, that my parents wanted to meet him. So he rode the bus to Memphis and I picked him up at the bus station uh, downtown. He didn't fly. He said flying was some boys and angels and he was neither one. So uh, I picked him up at the bus station, took him to a hotel and he stayed in Memphis three or four days uh, met my parents, had dinner with them a couple of nights. My parents loved him. Uh, and then after this, uh, I went back to New York with Cuss uh, on a train. We went from uh, Memphis to Chicago on a train, and then from Chicago to New York, and then to upstate New York, Catskill. Uh, and that's when I started my training with him. Cuss said when I met him, that he thought I had one of the most explosive right hands in the country. And my right hand is what really impressed him. And um, so when I got to uh, up to Catskill, New York, we mostly worked on my left hook. I didn't really have very much of a left hook because my right hand had been so effective. I knocked most of the people out with my right hand, but I knew I needed a left hook. So he showed me how to throw the left hook. Uh, and then I had uh, two good weapons, the right hand and the left hook. But my dad showed me how to throw the right hand. And he said the reason that he could not punch back when he was fighting was because when he threw the right hand, he was not turning his foot, which shifts all the weight into the punch. That he was only throwing the right hand and not turning his feet and only hitting with the top part of his body, which he was quick, but he had no power. So when he started training me to throw the right hand, he made sure that my right foot was at about a 45 degree angle. And when I threw the right hand, I turned the foot, my hip, and my shoulder all at the same time. And that's where you get your power. All your weight turning at the same time, coming out that right hand. And again, we worked hundreds of hours on this right hand, and it got to be where I could throw the right hand in my sleep. But it just, uh, it was very, very powerful, very effective. My first Golden Gloves in 1967, I had three fights in Memphis. I knocked them all out. I had two fights in Jackson, and I knocked one out and won the other on a decision. But it was because of the right hand. Throwing the right hand properly is not complicated. It's very, very simple. You just have to do the few things and do them right. All right, when you throw the right hand, your right foot is out about 45 degrees. When you throw it, at the same time you throw your shoulder, you twist your hip, and you twist your toe. That gives all your weight behind that punch. And what my dad was doing was this. He was not turning his foot, and he was only hit with the top part of his body. That's why he didn't have any power. But when he started working on it, trying to figure out why, years later at the YMCA, he discovered all you got to do is turn your right foot and get all that weight behind that shot. And that's what we worked on, hour after hour after hour. It's not complicated, it just takes a lot of time doing it. It's repetition over and over and over again. Some people say hard punchers are just born naturally. I don't believe that. I believe anybody can be a puncher if they learn how to shift their weight properly. You want to turn everything at the same time, your foot, your hip and your shoulder at the same time. <coughs> Turn it at your hands up, bring them right back to your face.
These are peekaboo boxing gloves that I had specially made. They're 18 ounce, all leather, and they will be available to you uh, shortly. We're gonna set up a link either on the website or the Facebook page, so please stay tuned. They're on their way.